If cauliflower can be steaks, or cauliflower can be rice, why can't butternut squash also be a steak? That's what I want to know. And thankfully today I'm going to show you how to make butternut squash steaks that you're going to go crazy for. Um, but I want, before we get into the recipe, which I promise is so good, so please stay tuned to the end because I do have a little surprise for you, but um, I want to talk just a little bit about selecting the butternut squashes and then cooking with them because uh, that makes a big difference. Trust. So you're going to use most of like the neck part for your butternut squash steaks. So if you want like longer, bigger steaks, choose a squash that has um, just a longer neck to it. You're going to use kind of more of this bulb part for another use. And so I like to add it into chilies. I like to um, blend it into kind of like a soup to have that thick, creamy base. I like to roast it and then add it into kind of like quinoa bowls or rice bowls. Um, literally the possibilities are endless. I definitely don't have you know, any problem using up extra butternut squash, but keep in mind, you just want that part for the steak. Meaty part. Got it? Good. And the second thing is that when you have your butternut squash, you want to look for a diameter that's at least like two and a half, three inches wide because you want to get a couple steaks out of it, right? And these steaks are going to be, you'll see about three quarters of an inch to about an inch thick in diameter. So make sure that you choose butternut squash that has a long neck if you want big steaks, but more importantly, a fat diameter to get the meatiness of that steak. So once you have it all cut up, which you'll see in the video, um, you'll see that I'm using a, what is this? <laughs> what is this thing called? Um, a wire rack inside of a rim baking sheet. And the reason that is, is that um, sometimes when you just roast butternut squash, you know how it kind of gets like, it's like warm and it's like soft and chewy, which is delicious. But I find that if I wanted like a steak, I want something that's gonna like hold its form. And if you have a big piece of butternut squash in a pan, not gonna do that. This helps to kind of circulate that air a little bit more and dry it out. Plus with the cross hatch, like little design thing we're gonna do, like cut cross hatching, you know, make it look all fancy, um, but it really takes two seconds. But that's gonna help them kind of dry it out too to get that nice, like robust meaty flavor. Um, pair the butternut squash, it's going to be mild and kind of sweet with a nice bold seasoning. You'll see what I use, but feel free to explore. I find that this goes really great with some sauteed greens and a protein, um, like some grilled tofu or tempeh, sauteed tofu tempeh. Um, or again, just like if you're, if you're eating that meat, eat that meat y'all. <laughs> but either way, dive into this recipe for butternut squash steaks and I think you're going to love it. The first thing we're going to do is cut the butternut squash. So trim off both ends and then you want to cut the neck part from the big um, kind of rounded part. The rounded part you'll see we're going to use for something else, but the necks are what we're going to use for the butternut squash steak. So cut off all of the um, outside edge pieces. You can roast with those generally speaking, but for this purpose we do not. So I like to cut the chunks off first and then I just kind of scoop out the inside. There's definitely lots of different ways to cut butternut squash. I just find this to be the most easy um, or easiest and just like most, I don't know, user friendly, I guess. So scoop all those insides into a compost bowl or discard bowl and then chop it into chunks. Now these chunks are going to be used for a different purpose. So maybe you want to blend them into a soup. I like to roast them, um, which I'll do, and then add them into kind of bowl meals with tofu or greens, anything like that. Add a couple tablespoons of olive oil to those roasted chunks. And then I like to add Herba Mary. So Herba Mary is an all-purpose seasoning and it has garlic, onion, a whole bunch of good stuff. So I sprinkle a little bit of that on, it has salt too, and then I put it on a parchment lined pan or a lined pan just so it doesn't stick. Um, spread it out nice and thin and then bake it at 400 for about 15 minutes depending on how big your chunks are. Back to the sticks. So cut the pieces in three quarters of an inch to an inch thick. Um, of course, some are gonna be kind of bigger, smaller, just depends on how long your neck is and how fat the diameter is. But you should probably get um, at least four steaks from each neck. 
And then from there, you're going to turn it on the flat part and begin to cut diagonals just about an eighth of an inch thick and cut these um, in sort of a pattern that looks good to you, doesn't have to be rocket science or perfect, um, but just sort of a, a cross pattern. Turn it over and do the same thing on the other side. And again, just trying to keep it um, sort of thick, about an eighth of an inch so it gets down there. That'll help dry it out and create sort of that nice um, texture that we want, but also it'll help for the seasoning to um, go inside. So lay them all on that rimmed baking sheet. This helps again dry it out and create that texture that we're looking for. And then you can brush olive oil on, but I find that just kind of rubbing it, um, getting all up in there in the food is a really nice way to, to cook. Um, some people don't like to do that, so definitely use a brush if that's your jam. But you want to make sure that it gets into every piece, every little crack. You may need a little bit more. I try to be pretty conservative with the olive oil, um, but again, do what kind of suits you here. And then a really bold taste flavoring. So some chili lime seasoning from Trader Joe's. Chili powder would be great with some garlic powder and salt if you don't have the chili lime seasoning. Um, but that bold chili powder goes so, so well with the butternut squash. And then... Um, so I did add some more chili powder just to again make it pop. This also helps when you're cooking them to kind of get that browned coloring. So use a dark color seasoning to help get the coloration that we're looking for. You're going to put it in the oven at 500 for about 15 minutes um, to a half hour depending on how thick they are. You don't want them to be all the way done. So you pull them out when they're just about done key, key, key there when they're just about done. And then you actually pan fry them for the last three to five minutes on each side. This helps get them nice and crisp and really that texture we're looking for. So good. So who is ready to turn their butternut squash into some nice juicy steaks? I bet you are. And if you are, give me a good like and let me know that you like this video. Or if you think it's like super helpful, creative, you want to try it, you have questions, any of the above, comment below, let me know. Better yet, subscribe and you will catch a new fun video in your inbox? In whatever they call it on YouTube every week. Until next time, I will see you soon.